he left Judea and departed in, again in the Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. <coughs> Jesus saith unto her, <coughs> pardon me, I have sinus troubles, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the sea to buy meat. Then saith Jesus a Galilee unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a, Samar a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Then Jesus answered and said, Thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. <coughs> Thou wouldest have given, have asked of him, and he would give thee living waters. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the wells deep, and from hence, then hast thou the, that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank there of himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said, Whatsoever thou, whosoever shall drink of this water, shall never thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I give, shall never thirst again. I meant never, shall thirst again with the well. Never thirst again, but the water which I gave him shall be a well of water springing unto everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I have nothing to Sir saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I may thirst, not thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said saith unto her, Go call thy husband, and thou and call, come hither. The woman answered and said, Sir, I have no husband. Jesus saith unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. In that thou sayest thou truly. Jesus said, I mean the woman said him, Sir, I perceive thee that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. I'll stop there. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this night. Thank you for this opportunity. Help us, Lord, with it. apply this message to our hearts and lives. And always remind us that we need to go to Samaria. In Jesus' name. Amen. The title, We Must Needs Go Through Samaria. You know, Jesus did not limit himself to just one type of person, did he? Amen. He didn't just uh, take a look at the Samaritans and say, well, the, under this day and age, they say biracial, and just cast them aside. So they're just a bunch of half-breeds and stuff like that. No, no, no. He went to where there was a need. And he was willing to reach out to both the Jews and the Samaritans. And amazing, at least, we know of at least two issues where uh, some Gentiles reached out to him. One was a centurion. What did Jesus say about the centurion? That he, he'd never seen such great faith no, in, not in Israel. Then the other woman, the Syrophoenician woman, man, he, 
he actually was sounded like he was being a little rough on her, didn't it? But you know what? He knew that you know he realized that people were eyeing him. I don't think he did that to run her off. I think he knew her heart, and I think he knew that if she just made her press a little longer. She would do more than just give her, get her daughter healed. She would get saved herself. That's why I believe he was a little rough there. But anyway, tonight he went to the Samaritans. The Samaritans once again were biracial. They were half Jew, half whatever other race it was. And the Jews of that day did not appreciate them. You know what? We should look beyond this racial. Amen. We should reach out to blacks. Amen. Amen. I have nothing against blacks. I like to reach out to them. You know what? My, one of my number one disappointments has been in my years in the ministry is how few black churches I have preached in. I think maybe two. I like to preach in some more. Because I'll tell you what, I love to get to their churches and worship God with them. Amen. Amen. I believe in reaching out to the black. Amen. In fact, if y'all want to know, it was a black lady that led me to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I have no problems with a black race. I've learned years ago, you look beyond the skin color and look to their heart. Amen. As what Dr. Martin Luther King said, we don't judge them by their... We judge them by the content of the character, not by the color of their skin. I agree with that 100%. Amen. So tonight, we need to reach out to the blacks. We need to reach out to the Asiatic people, such as people from China and Japan and Taiwan and Philipp the Philippines. You know, some of them have been put here in America. Sometimes I believe for a reason to be reached out to. And I believe God can use some of those different races greatly. I love it. Sometimes when I'm driving to places like over Kil uh, Texarkana yesterday, I saw a church that said Korean Baptist church. I said, well, praise the Lord. Yeah. We need to reach out to the different people who come to our country. Amen. I'm for reaching the Mexican and the El Salvadoran. And you know some of them don't come here legally. Amen. And I'm not favor them coming here legally. But guess what, brother? Whether they're here legal or illegal, I'm going to reach out to them. Amen. I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to reach out to them. I've often found some of the people from Hispanic backgrounds are more uh, open to the gospel sometimes than we whites or blacks. Come on! That's why I try reaching out to them. I wish I knew more Spanish. I wish I uh, knew more... Me comprende paquito espanol. I do sing a song about a repentate pecador ayor no mañana mañana moves tarde. It's really saying repent sinner now, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's too late. If you want to know, I've even sang a song like that the Lord gave to me. And boy, some of those people when I was working at the Weston Company years ago, I think they loved it when I start singing that to them. <laughs> <clears throat> so tonight, I don't care what race they are. I don't care if there are people from India, people who are Arab. You know what? Not all Arabs are Muslim. Some Arabs are born-again believers. I know sometimes when you meet them, sometimes you're a little distant from them. I remember whenever I worked at a Walmart years ago, one of the ladies that helped me one time with some projects there, I knew she was from Egypt, but, you know, I was probably already thinking, he's, she's probably Muslim. Guess what I found out about two or three days before she left? She was a Christian. Amen. Come on, be careful. Sometimes those people you don't think are Christians because they're from <clears throat> a, a Muhammad's country could be here because they had to escape that country <clears throat> for their life to be spared. Right. <clears throat> we don't know. Tonight, Jesus said he must needs go through Samaria. And I believe we do too. Yeah. 
First off, Samaritans in that day were outcasts. They were looked down on by the, by the Jews. Yet Jesus knew He needed to go there. How many of us feel sometimes led to talk to somebody of another race? Come on. Of another social background. I'm thankful to hear about that, that thing about reaching out to the homeless under the bridge. That's a good thing. And I pray you have some fruit from it. Because tonight there's all kinds of people who need the Savior. You know who? Till we got saved, we all did. Amen. That's one reason why I hate, hate racism, real racism too. Because see, we are all born in sin and trespasses. We all... Uh, our, all of our biography can be found in Romans chapter 9 Romans chapter 3 I mean 9 through 20 and also Romans 3 23 for all sin have come short of the glory of God the Bible says John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life that's all mankind. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> it's not it's just the whites. It's not just the Jews. It's not just uh, blacks or, or red or yellow or brown. It doesn't matter. Jesus died for the all mankind. And we should be willing to reach out a hand Amen. to all mankind. And this is what I really want to point out. Know something. Jesus sat that well in the hottest part in the heart part of the day around the sixth hour. This woman came along. Understand, even the even her fellow Samaritans didn't even like her. That's why she had to go out in a hot spot of the day and get her water to drink by. Because even she was not only an outcast being a Samaritan, she was an outcast amongst the outcasts. I believe tonight we should be willing to reach out to the worst of the worst. Come on. Jesus sure did. He reached out to, to I believe he was living today, he would reach out to some of the worst sinners we can imagine. But one thing, I believe they would not return the same way. They would come back a different way. If they were involved in homosexuality, they won't be in homosexuality anymore. If they are involved in adultery, they won't be involved in adultery. If they're a fornicator, I believe they won't be a fornicator anymore. I believe they're involved in drugs. I'll tell you what, there's cases where people, when they got saved, were instantaneously taken off of drugs. Amen. I'll tell you something. I've seen God do miracles for those people. Amen. We have a common friend, don't we? Yes. Brother Tim Davis. I, he'll be, he's supposed to be on my list, so he'll be hearing this. Tim Davis was wasted. I mean, he was in bad shape, but the Lord saved him and gave him his mind back. Amen. His mind may not be perfect, but guess what? God done a work in him. And I'm thankful for the work that he did for Tim Davis. Amen. I believe he can do the same for others. Jesus reached out to this woman. She was shocked that he'd even ask her to drink. Hey, you know what that shows me? It shows me how much prejudice we need. None. Amen. If you have any, be honest about it. Sometimes, I hate to say it, me being more southern, I kind of sometimes frown on northerners. Hey, I have no reason to frown on northerners, brother. You're a northerner originally. But sometimes I have that tendency. Do I hate northerners? God forbid. I preached up north and I'd love to get up there again. Huh? Yeah, yeah, West Virginia, the state I'm from, was, was a northern state during the Civil War. i got to remind myself. But being living in Virginia for over 30 years, you kind of forget that. 
but tonight whether you know if you have a prejudice you need to deal with it yeah. whether it's, you know you you frown on the northerners or you frown on the southerners you frown on the midwesterners you need to learn to get over it there's great people in all parts of this country amen and there's also some lousy people in all parts of the country too so what do you do you reach out to the lousy ones and try bringing them to Jesus. Amen. But tonight, he reached out to this woman. I don't think hardly anybody else would have even touched her. But he's shown exactly how much prejudice we need. None. He was willing to take water from her. I believe she needed physical water. He would have gave it to her. I believe he would have helped her any way he could. Because he was looked beyond her, beyond her uh, sin, and beyond her race, and reached out to her, and that's how we ought to be. Sometimes we think the worst people will never get saved. Hold on a minute. I believe the Lord can save the worst. I believe He can save the worst. I have a Baptist preacher friend now passed away about six years ago. I'll tell you his name, Dr. Robert L. Sumner. He was a man, I, he was my favorite writer. You know, we disagreed on at least four issues. I won't cover them here, okay? But, <clears throat> he wrote in one of his books, <clears throat> think of this power <clears throat> line, 95 Precious Promises, a story about man he was the type of man I would probably gave up hope on. Come on. I would gave up all hope on him. Because see, this man was bound by opium. And he was in like an, a place where they put all these people involved in opium. You know, sort of a, like, I don't know what word to use. I think the modern words crash pad but see they kept them bound by opium they didn't try getting them off they kept them there tied down a slave to their sin <clears throat> you wonder how this man <clears throat> he told about would they ever hear the gospel he never told the man's real name but I'll give the name he said Jimmy the rat that may sound like a bad name to give somebody it is but guess what happened to Jimmy the rat? He was bound in that place where they kept people hooked on opium hostage. One day he was able to get outside briefly. And when they got outside, he heard, I believe, I don't know if it was a Salvation Army or another group, outside singing gospel hymns. All of a sudden, they grabbed him from the inside and took him back downstairs. They roughed him up, but they did one thing. They threw him outside once again, hoping he'd die. But guess what? Those people there singing and preaching the gospel was still there. And guess what happened to Jimmy the Rat that day? Jimmy the Rat got gloriously saved. Jimmy the rat was delivered from opium. Jimmy the rat, you know, with the help of the church and other Christians, he was able to find a job, a place to stay. And guess what else? He was able eventually to get married and have children and have a family. And one reason why I don't think they ever mentioned his real name, because after he got saved, his children were in, came along. He quit going by Jimmy the Rat and went by his real name. But for the sake of the story, that's what they called him. Jimmy the Rat, a vicious sinner, bound by opium, God saved and delivered. <coughs> I could probably tell others. Amen. I knew a man years ago it was a town drunkard. <coughs> Somewhere in this great country. He finally got saved. and He went to this church where his pastor would give him rides. 
He got saved. Entered the ministry. Went to Bible school. Graduated. And for years, he preached the gospel around the country. And I'll leave it there. But the man did have a great experience with the Lord. Tonight, I believe we need to reach out to them. Once again, look, overlook the race. Overlook the, where they're born at. Whether they're born in, yeah. down south, up north, out west, midwest, it don't matter, brother. Right. We need yeah. to love everybody yeah. and we need to get over our prejudices. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Because I'll tell you what, it's sad when we look down on people just because of where they were born or just because of their skin. I'll tell you something else. I believe in reaching out to people of all kinds of social issues. I'm talking about economic issues. I find sometimes the poor are often the easiest to reach. It's also we, it's easy to reach the mid-class. You know who the hardest to reach is? The rich. But guess what? There are rich people who've gotten saved. I'm trying to think who that man was who did all these... Familiar the name of the man that was wrote the book of Movers of Men and Mountains. I can't think of his name. He was a rich man. He got gloriously saved. And by the way, speaking of tithing, he did not give 10% to the Lord's work. No, he gave 90%. Wow! i tell you what. God blessed him abundantly. Amen. Laterno. I think was his name. R.G. Laterno just came to me. So you know what? We shouldn't even be afraid to reach out to the rich. Amen. There's people of different religions. We know they're going to hell. We know they're lost. But would you be willing to reach out to a Buddhist? Would you be willing to reach out to a Muslim? I know Muslims can be dangerous, but thank God the Lord has dealt with them. One example was they said a few years ago there were several Muslims who kept having visions of Jesus. And guess what happened? Many of them came to the faith. And guess what? They no longer had visions of Jesus. They met Jesus. Amen? Amen. And had an experience with Him. So they didn't need a vision now. They got the reality. Come on. So God can deal with Muslims. God can deal with Buddhists. He can deal with Hindus. I've tried to deal with a Hindu here and there. Amen. She wasn't the easiest one. She wasn't hateful. In fact, she was opposite. She was extremely nice. However, she had a funny view about God. See this here? Did you believe she believed that was God? This pulpit? She believed everything was God. Then one day I asked her the question she should have answered right. Is Jesus God? She said no. I'll tell you. The only one who is God is Jesus. I believe in the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Don't get me wrong. One God, three individuals. Separate. But they all Amen. Work for us Amen. on our salvation. So now I'm getting ready to get close, ready to close. That woman, he asked her, <clears throat> "Go call your husband." She said, "I have no husband." He confronted her by with her sin. You know that's sad when we don't confront him. <clears throat> There's some people <coughs> who are under such conviction, all you have to do is tell them how to be saved. And they'll probably give up any sin that, they, that, that, that you'll even mention to them. In fact, they'll probably give up without you mentioning to them. How many others struggle with just one sin? This woman, thank God, didn't struggle with her sin long. She had five husbands. 
the one she had was not her own. Was not her own. We look at the rich young ruler. Covetousness kept him from the kingdom of God. I could go throughout telling about others. But once the sin issue was done, she received Christ and went into the village and told them what the Lord had done. Saved the worst sinner in that village. And now she told them about it. What happened? A lot of them came out and got saved. They said it wasn't because of her. It's because we saw her in him ourselves tonight. <coughs> you have to reach out for the worst of the worst. I could have dealt with the best of the best. Like Nicodemus in John 3. I always love the fact that both of those chapters are back to back, brother. Because see, John 3 is the best of the best. A deeply religious man. A ruler of the Jews. He was lost. Then in John 3, probably the most wicked lady in Samaria. <coughs> but guess what? Jesus reached out to her. And she was saved. Now, I believe Nicodemus was, as we'll read if you read later on. But tonight, I just want to challenge us, not just the church, but myself. Let's look for opportunities to reach the lost. If God brings you the worst of the worst, please don't be afraid. God could even give you grace to face Him. I'm going to close with this story. It may not necessarily be the best of the best or worst of the worst, but it shows how God can work on us. I know this preacher and his wife one time came by a house the witness to a certain man. You know what happened? They knocked on the door and the man said, after they start to witness, he told them to get out of his house and he was going to come back and shoot them. They got out of the house. They got in the car and he was ready, the preacher was ready to start it. When he looked at his wife and he said, Honey, do you feel what I'm feeling? She said, Yes. We're to go back and talk to him again. Brother, I sure wouldn't have done that unless the Lord told me. Amen. I promise you that. But God gave him the witness to go back. He talked to that man. He was nice this time. He was led to the Lord. Two weeks later, he was in heaven. It would been sad if they had not obeyed the Lord. Amen. So tonight, let's be willing to go wherever God tells us to go. Witness. <coughs> Where be it a, a supermarket, gas station, or wherever. Be willing. God bless you. I'm going to close.